Hello, everyone. Welcome to the orientation and introduction to Penn Foster for parents. My name is Mara Meter. I'll be hosting the webinar today. I thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to join me. Uh, at the end of this webinar, my hope is that you will have a stronger understanding of what the Penn Foster High School program is like. Um, you'll feel more comfortable with how to help your student to study, to prepare for their exams, and to be successful um, overall in their programs. Um, please feel welcome to type your questions into the box and I will do my best to answer them as I can throughout the webinar today. Again, my name is Mara. I've been a teacher's assistant at Penn Foster for about three years and I've had um, a pretty eclectic background working with students of different ages from preschool all the way up to high school and um, even some adult students. And I'm always really impressed with Penn Foster students because it takes a lot of motivation to do a program like this. And there's no one, um, like it, in a traditional school saying, you have to get this done by this time and you have to get this done. Um, so we, we definitely are very grateful for the support <clears throat> of our students' parents who are supervising the student education. And we're also really impressed with the, um, the self-motivation and the drive of our Penn Foster students. So welcome to Penn Foster. We're so proud to have you to be a part of our Penn Foster family. Um, we have really, really awesome students in our program, and we welcome you aboard. Today we're going to talk about uh, sending official transcripts for evaluation. I'm going to give you a little virtual tour, uh, show you where to f your student can find their message center and other online resources. We're going to discuss our Penn Foster School policies. Uh, academic requirements and where your student can find live help with their courses and the requirements for graduation. Before I begin the agenda, I'd like to begin by introducing you to our Penn Foster support staff. These are the instructors who are available to help your student with every course. And a lot of students, I think, don't realize that there are instructors who can help them. So that's very important to know that these are the faces of the real people who are here to support you and support your students. Um, so the, our department is led by Brian Brown, our chairman and principal. On our English team, we have Elena Bright, Megan Lodge, and Sean Cherenchak. So those are the folks who will be helping your student with their English courses. Our science instructor is Aliska, Alyssa Sklareski. Skarleski. <laughs> Let me try that one one more time. Alyssa Skarleski. She's our science instructor, so she'll be helping you with um, your student with their science courses. Uh, we have Daniel Chirillo and Zach Lansdowne, who are our Spanish instructors. Spanish is not a required course in the Penn Foster High School program, but it is available as an elective. So if your student would like to take Spanish, Daniel or Zach would be available to help them with their Spanish work. Our social studies instructor is Paul Schneider, so he would be helping your students with their uh, social studies courses such as civics, world history, uh, American history. And our math instructor is Miriam DeWood, so she would be helping your student with their general math courses or their algebra geometry, depending on whether they want general math or academic math, which we'll discuss a little later in the webinar today. When you call in, you'll also likely speak with our team of teacher's assistants, <clears throat> which is the team that I am a part of. And um, I wanna really briefly introduce you to the other folks as well. We have Laura, Katie, Anthony, Quinn, I'm sorry I'm working on getting a picture of Quinn. She's one of our newest uh, members of the team. Um, we also have Caitlin, Patrick, and Mara, that's me. <clears throat> so um, again, real people that really care about what your student is doing. So please always feel welcome to contact us for support if you have concerns, if you have questions. Okay, moving forward to transcripts. If your son or daughter has attended some high school before enrolling at Penn Foster and has earned some high school credits, they may be eligible to transfer them into their Penn Foster 
high school program so that they don't have to complete those credits again. They can do this by contacting their previous school and asking them to mail us their official transcripts in a sealed envelope. That part is very important. So if you pick up the, the transcript from the school, that's okay. Just make sure you don't open the envelope. It has to be sealed by the school. That's very important. Uh, mailed transcripts usually arrive uh, at Penn Foster within seven to 10 days. So I know that it's difficult, but um, please be patient while the uh, transcript is en route and you will be notified by email when we receive the transcript and when your student's transcript has been evaluated. Again, the, um, the transcript must be in a sealed envelope, must also be signed by an administrator at the school and stamped with their school seal. Those are the three things that make it official. Uh, another option students have is to order an e-transcript through services like parchment.com or docufied.com. Through these services, the official transcript can be sent to Penn Foster by email electronically within 48 hours. There is a service fee um, for ordering transcripts through these, these websites, but some students feel that it's worth it for them to get it to us a bit faster. So um, it's not required, but definitely an alternate option to mailing it. In the meantime, even if students are submitting transcripts, they can get started with the first three courses, which are orientation, human relations, and reading skills. These are the students' humanities courses, and all students have to take them. So students can safely complete these without risking taking a course that they might get credit for with a transfer credit. The fourth course is U.S. Civics. <clears throat> this is a U.S. government course. So um, sometimes we find students in traditional schools end up taking a U.S. government course in their junior or even senior years. So if you're pretty positive that your student did not take a U.S. government course, they can probably complete civics as well while they're waiting for their transcript to be evaluated. They should not move past U.S. civics, however, because then they would be getting into what would be considered their ninth grade courses. And if a student starts or completes a course they would have been eligible for transfer credit for, they will no longer be eligible for that credit. So I'll say that again, if a student starts or completes a course they would have gotten a credit for, they'll no longer be eligible to transfer in that credit. They'll have to complete it, okay? Message Center. The Message Center is located at the top right-hand corner of the student's page, and it ha is um, represented with a little icon of a bell and new messages are represented in a small red circle. This is where Penn Foster will notify your student of any important upcoming changes, anything that may um, cause interruption in their study. Um, this is where instructors would reach out to offer one-on-one -on -one support to a student who might be struggling. So um, I always recommend students check this and get in the habit of checking it every time they log in. That's very important. Students will also be informed of important information through account alerts, which are located at the top of the screen. Yellow alerts indicate there's something that needs to be addressed. Red alerts mean it needs to be addressed as soon as possible, immediately. Um, in order to avoid any disruption in the student's studies. When a student logs in, they'll always come to their home page first, and it'll say welcome back in your student's name and the current course that they're working on. It also has a description of the course, a progress bar to show them how much of the course they've completed, and an orange resume button so that they can resume on the very page that they left off the last time they were studying, which is a really nice feature. You don't have to flip through pages and pages to find where you were before. When they click on resume course or start course, on the left-hand side of the page, they'll see some numbers. These are the student's lesson numbers. 
So every course has a number of lessons. It will vary from course to course. The important thing to remember is that every lesson has an exam at the end. So this breaks up the course information into manageable, studyable material that um, where students can learn and avoid being overwhelmed. So they will be assessed or tested at the end of each lesson. The next tab on the student's program is the Program and Courses button. From this tab, they can also access their current course and resume their studies. They can also access any upcoming, or they can also see any upcoming courses. They would not be able to open them because students can only do one course at a time in the Penn Foster program, but they can see what courses are uh, coming up next as well as their completed courses that they've already finished. Also, uh, not included on this slide, it, there's a section that says other active courses where students can go back to previous courses to retake exams or review anything that they like. We're gonna talk about retakes too in this webinar a little bit later on. The next tab is the grades tab where students can check their grades that they're earning as they're moving through the program. It's also a really great way to see all of the courses in the program in a different way. It's very linear, so um, the first course is at the top of the page, the last course is at the bottom of the page. So this is a very nice way to see every course in the order the student will be completing it. Students will also be able to see how many lessons they have been excused from after their transcripts have been evaluated. On the left column is the course title and the lesson titles for every course. Next is the grades column where students can see both their lesson grades as well as their course averages. The course averages are in bold print where the lesson grades are not in bold print. Students can see the grade where they, the, the date that they completed the exam and the status of the exam. So if a student has completed the exam and they've retaken it, as in this example, the life skills lesson was taken by the student on May 17th and they retook the exam on the same day, so that is completed now. In human relations, in managing and improving relationships, the student took the exam on May 18th, but she did not retake it, so it's still eligible to retake, and that you can be seen in the in the status column. The next tab on the student's portal is the help and support tab, and from this tab, students can have alternate ways to get answers to any questions that they have. Some students love to call. Other students prefer not to call if they don't have to, so um, we have other ways that students can self-service and get answers to their questions. When they click on the Help and Support tab, the student will first see a box where they can type in a key word from their question, and then push Search, and this will generate a list of popular questions and answers. If their answer does not appear, then they have the option to push on Contact Us, and this will allow them to email Penn Foster. This is a really great tool to use after business hours, which are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Those are our business hours. After those hours and on weekends, Penn Foster instructors are not available by phone. We usually do have an instructor answering emails on the weekends, however. So if a student is working on something on the weekend, they want an answer within a reasonable time frame, they can send an email and get an answer within 24 hours. Additionally, students can click on the Chat Now option and chat with a live representative during our business hours. The next tab is the Resources tab. From the Resources tab, students can access videos to help them uh, with other aspects of the program, like um, 
getting comfortable with navigating their courses. How do I find my lessons? How do I find my exams? All of that um, information can be found in that first video. Uh, there's also videos about finding out what kind of learner the student is, what study habits would most likely help certain types of learners, taking exams, exam strategies. Th these are really great for new students to watch especially. Also on the resources tab are some um, some other features. The, f the first one is the student catalog and forms area. Um, the student catalog is like the student handbook where a lot of the information we'll be talking about today as far as policies um, can be found. So if you have any questions, it's a really great reference and a good idea to read through with your student. There's also a variety of forms where st that students can use to make certain requests for changes and things throughout their program. And we're going to refer to that um, a again. We're going to come back to that later on in the webinar as well. The next option is the Penn Foster Virtual Library, where students can find uh, resources to help them with their coursework. They can also have um, help from a virtual librarian during our business hours, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. From here, they can visit the Penn Foster online bookstore. This is where they can buy caps and gowns if they want to have their graduation pictures taken, if they want to participate in graduation events. They can also purchase t-shirts, ball caps, um, coffee cups, you name it. There's a lot of things there with the, the Penn Foster logo on them. So if a student wants to show their school pride, they can purchase items there. We're going to skip over the career services um, because we're actually replacing that with something better to the Refer a Friend, which is a program that we offer to students who refer their friends or family members to enroll at Penn Foster. Um, so if you are someone who was referred by someone else, you would be eligible for a credit as well as the friend that referred you. And this is where you would enter their information in order to become eligible for that credit. Once your friend has been enrolled for three months, the student would receive a tuition reduction of $50. Going back to career services, Penn Foster does offer services in career exploration, job search methods, interview skills, resume and cover letter creation, set, uh, setting up networking techniques, building an online professional image, and all of these things are now offered through the student's personal six, um, career coach. Career coaches can be contacted at any time. Students don't have to wait until they're graduated or at the end of their program. They can be contacted through email, by phone, and also by setting an appointment through the booknow.appointment-plus.com link by phone, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday Eastern Time, and by email. So I'll give you a moment to jot down um, any of this information that you would find helpful. Keep in mind, too, um, you don't have to uh, go crazy trying to write down every single thing because you will get a recording of this webinar tomorrow by email. So if you want to watch it again um, or you want to go over anything else, Again, you'll have a copy of this webinar to reference. Privacy policies. Students in the United States are protected by federal law under the FERPA Act. And this um, is a federal law that mandates that no information shall be given to anyone other than the student once the student is 18 years of age or older. If the student is a minor and you as their parent are supervising and administering their information, yes, of course, we can 
provide any information if the student is under 18. Once they turn 18, they are protected by FERPA laws. So that means that in order for us to continue to support our parents and supporting their students, we have to have written permission from the student. And um, this now we're going back to the resources tab where we talked about the student catalog and forms area. There's a form under the forms area that is the privacy release form that a student can fill out to give permission for us to speak with someone else on their behalf. They have to give the person's name specifically. So if you think this is something you might experience during your student's journey with us, um, please discuss the privacy release with your student. Our progression policy. Penn Foster is a go at your own pace program, but what does this mean? Um, we want to make sure that, that this is not misunderstood. Go at your own pace means Penn Foster does not require students to attend class or take exams on mandatory dates. So students can take their time, they can take their exam when they feel ready to take the exam, and we're not going to give them a date to do it. This allows students to study on their own schedules. Um, also, students can study at night, they can study on the weekends, they can study in the summer. So this might not only allow a student to slow down if they need to, to go at a slower pace, but work during times when they wouldn't be able to in traditional school and therefore work faster. However, all students are expected to read all of their lesson materials and complete all of their assignments before taking their exams. Completing assignments. Students will prepare to be successful on their graded exams by completing their lesson assignments. Each lesson will be divided into manageable sections of study material. Each section will have a reading assignment and subsequent class assignments that help students to recall what they know and review what they've learned from their reading assignment, interpret any new information, apply what they're learning, and then demonstrate and further develop their understanding by formulating well thought out answers to critical thinking questions. So many students ask me, do I have to do the discover more questions? Do I have to answer those? Yes, the student should be answering them. They are there for the student's benefit. Um, they're not graded, but they're there to help the student to be successful on their graded exams. Some study tips. Um, students are encouraged to read and reread the study material in each section. So um, read, review. Uh, review is very important for permanent, uh, permanent learning. Um, and not just memorizing for an exam. Um, students are also encouraged to take notes, and these notes should include any new vocabulary words and definitions, any concepts in bold or italic print from the reading assignments, as well as any new concepts included in the reading. At the end of each lesson, students will have flashcard and self-check tools to help them study. The flashcards are there to help them to study vocabulary words and definitions. And the self-checks are actually practice tests, so they can be, the computer can quiz them um, on the material for the lesson that they're studying. And it'll give them uh, like a, a, a score that doesn't count towards their lesson. Um, and they can use that score to determine Am I ready to take my graded exam, or maybe I should study a little bit more? It's also good for students to have a study plan. Students should make a daily and a weekly study plan, which includes what hours of the day or the week the student plans to spend studying, um, any daily allotted time to review material and notes from the previous sections is important. Um, students should also decide what new sections will be studied at the end of each day and, uh, and each week. 
and uh, don't forget to schedule breaks from intensive study. Um, it is important to take breaks and allow the brain to process um, what is being learned. There are also um, courses in the program that have textbooks, although most of the courses in the program are entirely online. Um, Earth Science, Biology, World History, and Literature have textbooks in addition to the online lessons. Uh, when the student is enrolled, they're able to choose either printed textbooks or ebooks. So if you chose printed textbooks, your student will receive printed textbooks in the mail when they reach these courses. Earth Science is the 10th course in the program. So for students um, receiving printed books, they wouldn't receive any book until their 10th course. Um, ebooks can be accessed right through the student's lessons. They'll see assignments that say chapter one, chapter two. Those are the assignments that lead them to their online ebook information. In the program, most of the exams are multiple choice exams, but they're are three written exams in the program in the practical English and the written communication courses. The written exams are a little bit different so if your student has some questions when they come to these exams please feel welcome to to contact an instructor and we can help them through it. Generally um, the instructions for these exams are located at the end of each of the lessons in practical English and in written communication, the instructions are found throughout the lesson itself. The essay is in written communication, and the essay should be 750 to 2,500 words written about an impactful event in the student's life. Okay, I have a really good question here. Um, so I'm just going to pause on the written assignments for a moment. And the question is, um, if we sign up for ebooks and decide during the course that it's not working well, can we request a printed book? Um, thank you so much for your question. So, if a student starts out um, the program choosing ebooks and they're they're using the ebook in a course, but they decide they don't like it, they cannot change it in the middle of a course. So you can only have one or the other because Penn Foster has to purchase the rights for the ebook or purchase the textbook. So both are not included. Um, however, if a student decides they want to change to printed textbooks when they finish the course, they can change to the other version of the textbook for the remaining courses that have textbooks. So you can't change it for the course in the middle of the course that you're working on, but you can change it for upcoming courses with textbooks. So I hope that that helps answer your question. Thank you so much. That was a great question. Um, okay, so uh, going back to written exams. So um, the instructions for the written exams are always found um, throughout the lesson or at the end of the lessons. They're not found when the student clicks on take exam. Also, written exams are graded by instructors. So this means that the um, exams can be returned by the instructor to the student without a grade. If the instructor feels that the student didn't really master something or they're not really understanding something, or maybe they just need a little bit more practice with something, They'll return it to the student with some feedback, telling them what they should correct, what they should revise. Then the student would need to submit the exam again for a grade after making the appropriate revisions. Additionally, written exams are usually evaluated within seven, five to seven business days um, because 
these exams are graded by instructors. It really just depends on how many exams the instructors receive in a given week. Sometimes it's a little bit sooner, but um, real, you know, general time frame is five to seven business days. If a student has an exam graded or returned, again, they'll get always get feedback from the instructor. To find the feedback, the student can click on their Program and Courses tab. They're going to choose the course for the uh, exam that they completed. So in this example, it's written communication. The bottom of the written communication course, they'll see their lesson numbers. And in written communication, the essay is the personal narrative in lesson three. So they go down to the lessons and click on the button that says review feedback underneath the lesson. This will allow them to download their instructor's feedback to see why they scored a certain grade or why their exam was returned and what needs to be corrected. Plagiarism. This is something really important to, um, to, to take a look at and discuss because Plagiarism is not accepted at Penn Foster or at any other educational institution. And um, plagiarism can have some pretty bad and severe consequences. So I never want to see a student find themselves in this situation. So please discuss plagiarism with your student and make sure that they have a solid understanding of what plagiarism is. Plagiarism is dishonestly using another person's ideas or their finished work or writing as their own without giving credit for the source. It includes copying or paraphrasing something and using it as if, as if you have done the work yourself. So basically they, they copy something written by someone else and uh, submit it as their own writing without giving credit to the source where they found that information. This is plagiarism. And if any part of the student's assignment is found online, the student will receive a 1% grade and will have to complete the assignment again. Multiple plagiarized assignments will result in dismissal from the program. Dismissal meaning termination, no diploma. Um, it doesn't happen that often, but I have seen it happen. It's a sad situation every single time. Um, but also, um, it is important that students are doing their work ethically and that they're submitting their own writing. So please make sure that your student understands what plagiarism is and the consequences of plagiarism so that they don't find themselves in a sticky situation. If a student is having trouble with a course or if they would just like to, um, to join their instructor for a live presentation, uh, live help is offered by instructors every week through live help sessions and webinars. Live help sessions are where the instructor takes uh, some time during each week to meet one-on-one -on -one with students in an open forum where students and instructors can meet in a common at a like in a common website and students can bring any questions that they have regarding a particular course or examination. St instructors also offer webinars which are live presentations, uh, not unlike the one you're attending right now. And they usually cover a specific topic in a course or a lesson. If a student is interested in participating in either live help sessions or webinars, they can access the full schedule on bit.ly backslash HS live help. Again, that's bit.ly backslash HS live help. Um, the other nice thing I, I mentioned earlier is if a student signs up for a webinar but they're not able to attend at the time it's offered, they will receive a recording of it the next day. So they can listen to it and watch it at their leisure.
Office hours are available for math, for algebra and geometry. Algebra 1 on Mondays from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time and Fridays from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time and Geometry on Wednesdays from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Science office hours are available for physical science on Wednesdays from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. English office hours are available for practical English on Mondays from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time, Wednesdays from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and written communications on Fridays from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Spanish hour, office hours are available on Fridays from 11 to 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, history office hours are available for civics on Thursdays from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time, American history on Fridays from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time, world geography and world history on Wednesdays from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, all of these office hours are available at bit.ly backslash HS Live Help. So you don't have to write all this down, um, but you'll have it available to you at that site. Additionally, students can make an appointment with instructors to reach out to them by phone at a time of their choosing. Sometimes instructors will reach out to the students through the message center. So they would post something like this. Um, high school students, Penn Foster's high school staff wants to be a part of your academic success. And then they'll say, um, include a link to schedule an appointment. If a student doesn't receive this, but they still feel that they need some help, they can click on their help and support tab, type in contact instructor and search, and they'll have access to the schedule an appointment link. When they click on the link, they'll get a list of the courses that they can choose from. So this is the math scheduler. They would choose the math course in the time zone where they live. They would then choose the time and the date when they would like the instructor to call them. And the instructor will reach out by phone at that time to offer one-on-one -on -one support. Students can also cancel appointments, reschedule appointments, all from this app. Math courses are interchangeable in the core program at Penn Foster High School, meaning that um, students can take a general math track or they can take an academic math track. If your child is thinking about pursuing higher education, then we suggest our academic math track. That is if they're going on to college. Um, colleges will like to see algebra and geometry on the student's transcript. If the student requests this, it is a permanent change. So if we change the general math courses to academic, it cannot be changed back to the general math. So because this is a permanent change, the request must be made in writing and can be um, requested by email by clicking on the help and support tab on their, their student page. If the student requests this change, then general math one becomes algebra one, consumer math becomes geometry, and general math two becomes algebra two. Choosing electives. Electives are the five courses at the end of every student's program. They are required, but the student gets to choose what they want to take from a list of electives we have available. When does the student choose them? At the end of their program. So after they've completed world history, students would be able to choose their electives. What are they choosing? There's a variety of general electives they can choose, as well as the option to choose a career pathway. So if a student for example, wants to study healthcare, childcare, information technology, they would be able to do five credits of elective courses in that one career path information technology, healthcare, childcare, etc. 
If you're interested in learning more about our career pathways, you can visit our main website, www.penfoster.edu, to see all of the career pathways available in the high school program. How does the student choose them? Uh, the student will, once they reach their electives, they'll have a button that asks them um, to choose their electives on their program and courses page. And from that, if they click on that blue button, it will pull up an electronic form where they'll be able to select their electives right online. Okay, I have a question. Thank you so much for your question. So um, my daughter already took Algebra 1, Algebra Support and Geometry at her former high school. Will she have to take these or can she not move on to Algebra 2? That's a really great question. So um, since she, she already did take some academic algebra, and this might apply to um, others joining us today, um, since she already took some academic math, it would really be a step backwards for a student who's already completed algebra to then do general math courses. Um, so she, she would receive transfer credits for her math courses, um, but you would still, I think, want her to, to request the academic math so that she, when she does reach that third math credit, um, she would be moving forward to Algebra 2. So that's a really great question. So um, I would say yes, submit her official transcripts if you haven't already, and request the academic math so that when her credits are added, it will reflect as a transfer credit for Algebra 1, a transfer credit for Geometry, and then um, she would probably still need to do Algebra 2. Great question, thank you. Um, another question, where did you say to go to choose academic math? You would want to go to the help and support tab on the left-hand side of the student's program. And then um, the student can type in um, academic math and then click on contact us to send an email. Remember we talked about that a little bit earlier? Okay, so there's an opportunity to practice it and get familiar with sending an email to us. And you'll want to include in your email that you understand it is a permanent change. Um, and then once we receive that email, we'll go ahead and make those changes for you. Thank you, great question. Exam policies. All exams are open book exams. That means that students can use their lessons to help them on their exams and their lessons only. If a student fails a subject and earns an average that is less than a 65, that is below passing, so they would have to make up that credit with makeup work. Core subjects can be made up with makeup exams and makeup exam is $25. Elective courses can be made up with a new elective for the cost of $50. The good news is that makeup work can be avoided by taking advantage of our retake policy. The retake policy means that students may retake any multiple choice exam to try for a higher score for 30 days from the original um, from the original attempt at the exam. This is a really great way for students to improve their averages, their GPAs, and if they're struggling with a course, to improve any failed exams. Um, so if a student does not pass with a 65 or higher, they can retake that exam for 30 days to try for a higher score. Um, if a, a written exam is not passed, the policy is a little bit different. So for a written exam, if it's not passed with a 65 or higher on the first attempt, the retake is required. So multiple choice retakes are optional 
written exam retakes are required if the score is below passing. Additionally, the retake has to be a new exam. So that means that writings from the previous written exam cannot be used in the retake. And the reason um, is because if a student fails a written exam, it shows that they definitely need some more practice. So we want to give them all the opportunity to practice the skills that they need to be successful. So because the retakes are um, for written exams are required if the exam is failed, they are not limited to the 30 days like the multiple choice exams are. Um, great question, thank you. How many times are you able to retake the same exam? A student can retake an exam only once. So they can take the exam, retake the exam, and that's it, they can't do that exam again. Thank you, great question. If a student earns between a 90 and a 100, that is equivalent to an A, an 80 to an 89 is a B, 70 to 79 is a C, 65 to 69 is a D, anything below a 65 is failing. An overall course grade of 65 or above in each subject is required to graduate and earn your diploma. After a student has completed and passed all of their courses, or if they haven't passed some, they can make up those courses. So if they pass their makeups, they will have earned 21 and a half credits. And academically, they will be graduated. Um, the other requirement to receive their diploma is to pay their tuition. So once both of these requirements are met, academically and financially paid in full, the student will receive their diploma and an official transcript by mail. And then they'll be um, prepared and excited to move forward to whatever big challenge is next in their lives. So that's our hope for all of our students. We look forward to watching them all get there and um, look forward to working with you as well uh, throughout that journey that your student is having. Uh, again, if you, you know, if you take away nothing else today, remember that we encourage you to contact us whenever, um, whenever necessary, if you need any support or if you have some questions, you can contact your instructors by phone from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, by dialing 1-888-427-1000 and choose option 5 from the main menu. Also, um, we can be connect contacted by text by texting the word LEARN from your mobile phone to 39033. You can chat with us from the um, Help and Support tab with the Help Center. Schedule a time for us to call you by making an appointment. And attend any live webinars at bit.ly backslash hslivehelp.